Hello everyone, I am today with Andrea from the project Medieval Tales from Europe, a 5e project live on Kickstarter. Hello Andrea. Yeah. Hello, hello. I saw Thanks. that you had a 5e project on Kickstarter. Could yeah. you tell me more? Yes, sure. So the project is called uh, Medieval Tales from Europe and uh, it's a new setting for 5th edition, set in the Middle Ages, uh, um, from the fall of the Western Roman Empire till the conquest of America. So it's, uh, it's very broad as a, as a time frame. It's, uh, it is now on Kickstarter, and it's been funded, so, so I take the chance to say that um, uh, the project will be delivered uh, and anyone interested can, can come on the website and, and get the game. So now it's sure the game will be, will be shipped. Uh, so this fifth edition, this new fifth edition setting is focused on uh, realism. Uh, that's the main thing. The, so there are only humans. So the race, the main race is the human. There are no other race. So everything is human. There are 11 new classes, uh, very characteristic from the Middle Ages. Uh, new cultural backgrounds and uh, and other things that uh, you can also from from the quick start. So as I say, the focus is the realism. This also means that the characters um, act following a very realistic logic. Um, so they have to prepare before traveling, for example. They have to be very careful when they enter in combats. Um, and it's also a, a low magic system. So uh, the characters of this setting are common people. Uh, common people with, with very strong motivations. So what they want to do basically is survive. Um, not necessarily they are heroes. Sometimes they behave as heroes but uh, they start as very uh, common people. Uh, there are many uh, elements of realism in the game. For example, the weapons they deal a lot of damage, not as in D&D, but like way more damage, like one or three hits can kill someone because we wanted to align to, to the realism um, of combat. So let's say this game, this new setting is, uh, is for those players that want a more focused, competitive game approach. Let's say it's like fifth edition with with more suspense and it's also important to say that this is not an expansion for D, &D uh, but it's a, a, a game for itself so it's a new setting that you use to create historical and medieval like scenarios and are there any additional mechanics in your setting yes there are new mechanics that are different uh, we we created new mechanics to accommodate a more realistic game trying to uh, change Uh, I mean, try, try to not change the fifth edition, but just, uh, I mean, just changing the minimum to accommodate more realistic game approach. There are two mechanics in particular that I like to discuss. Um, first one is the notoriety. So uh, each character has a value of notoriety. Um, <clears throat> you start with the value of notoriety according to your class, and you can uh, you can acquire, you can increase your notoriety through the level progression. But also, uh, not just through level progression, but also according to how you behave in the game. So what, what, do, you, what you do and if other people uh, see you while doing stuff. So uh, you can be a very famous person and have a very high notoriety, so you can be recognized. But this is not always good, the game. Uh, it depends on how you build up your notoriety. Imagine, for example, thief or smugglers. Uh, they don't want to be recognized. They, they try to, to have a low profile. It, on the opposite, if you're a noble, for example, you start with uh, a higher notoriety and you can be recognized that you can receive uh, hospitality, for example. It, according to the class you play, the, the adventure you play, you, you want to have a high or low notoriety and when you be careful on it. And the notoriety also triggers uh, some new class features, so it's very important as a mechanic. Uh, the second one is the, related to the combat, and it's called the uh, parry. So basically we use the new reactions, which is called parry, which is meant to uh, use when you have to block an attack, when you block a blow uh, which has been striked against you. Um, and so basically you have this new reaction uh, between the hit roll and, and the damage. So the, there is the hit roll, uh, for example, from an enemy, you, you get uh, um, hit, but then before damage you have this new checkpoint which is called parry, so you use your reaction to uh, neutralize the attack. So basically you roll a hit roll yourself, and if it's equal or higher the hit roll of your enemy, then you blocked it and you neutralize the attack. And you can parry in different ways, so you can also parry with bare hands, Uh, it's not always useful, especially when you have when you've been eaten by uh, iron weapons and so on. But you can also pair with objects. In this case, you have a disadvantage on on the heat roll you use for parry, or you can pair with weapons. 
uh, for example, when you have a sword in the hand, you can use it to, to parry. Um, and uh, according to the weapons, some of them are very useful to do so, others are completely useless according to the shape. And we included the very uh, important historical details in this. And the last, I would say, the, the, the shields, they are the most important uh, object <laughs> you use to, to, to parry. And also when you have a shield, you have advantage on the heat rolls you use uh, to parry. So uh, parry is, is very, um, is, is used a lot during combat and it really changed the game. It feels a lot still as a fifth edition to, uh, it's, uh, it really changed the game and make it more realistic, let's say. And you speak a lot about history. What kind of story can you play with your setting? Mm. Yeah, so uh, medieval can sustain a, a multitude of uh, historical, like Middle Ages-like scenarios, to say. Um, for example, uh, the, the, you can play real historical events um, in your campaign. Uh, I remember now, uh, 100 years war, the Crusades, the Black Death, or even the, the Arab conquest, the Norseman expansion. You, you, I mean, you can create adventures within this uh, real historical scenarios, but you can also play alternativist. I mean, you can play within these uh, scenarios, but at the same time, you can um, make the story goes different for your players. Not always you have to follow uh, the, the, the main course. Uh, you can also draw inspiration from literature. This is uh, personally, this is the aspect that I like the most. Uh, for example, you can play adventures within the world of Robin Hood or King Arthur, or again uh, <clears throat> Avalon and then the Celtic meets. So everything that is is literary, you can uh, you can take you can take inspiration. You can you can play it. it doesn't have to be history or uh, real events. But also you you can also base your campaign on fiction. So you can invent yourself an adventure in your own context, you know, your own scenario doesn't have to be linked to anything. So uh, being a setting, uh, this is important to mention, this is a setting, it's not a, a, a game model. So it's a setting, so it's a starting point to create other adventures and other scenarios that you like. Uh, as an author, you must be a fan of different kind of RPG. I would like to know, when did you start playing this kind of game? Mm. Yeah, I've been playing different role-playing games. Um, I started when I was very young. Uh, probably I was 12 or, or 13, and I remember I started as a DM. I mean, I played uh, probably one or two sessions, and then uh, I decided, okay, I, I like being a DM, and I want to want to create my own adventure, and, uh, and I want to be a DM. This is because I've always been a, a writer, in the sense that I, I've always been writing uh, stuff, from novels to simple manuscript, probably very crap. Uh, but I, I, I loved it, uh, and then when I found out, when, when I discovered the role-playing games, and I also found out that in the role-playing games you, you do both things. You write, but then you can bring your friends the stories that you write. Uh, and this was very rewarding, so I, I could both write and, and play with my friends and, uh, and show my manuscript to people. And I found it a very good way to bring people within my story. Uh, so it was love at the first sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. And yeah. speaking of that, could you tell me some fun story that happened in one of your games? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, he, uh, <clears throat> there are different stories. Uh, I, I remember them all. What is very nice is that I can uh, still. I, 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 I really, I really like the fact that my friends still remember some of those. Uh, this, uh, it, this, I think. Uh, uh, give a huge contribution in, in um, creating uh, the bond we have, no? me and my, my friends. I remember one, one uh, very funny uh, event. I, w I was playing with this, uh, this friend of mine, and uh, as a player, he used to do a lot of this enchantment. Uh, I don't remember if it was 3.5 edition, fifth uh, steel. Uh, it's called uh, Rope Trick. So you basically uh, have this rope attached to an extra dimensional window. Was so you open this extra dimensional window where you basically can store everything in it. And this player used to uh, store within this window uh, different objects from, uh, from goals and, and values. Uh, weapons, but also I remember a dead body <laughs> once. He stole, uh, he, he hide this dead body within this window, and then he, he forgot. I think for a few sessions that he had this dead body there, and then uh, in front of, uh, I remember it was a noble or a king. Um, he opened up this window because he wanted to show him some rare objects and and, and the goals, and suddenly this dead body splashed out from the window directly from the floor in front of the king, <laughs> and uh, it was very fun because the. Uh, that friend of mine 
forgot about this. I had forgotten about this dead body <laughs> within the, the window, but I uh, I remembered it, so I took note, and uh, and that was very fun. And I think uh, this kind of um, this kind of approach as a DM is, is very fun because then I think players feels that the the, the world is uh, is real. I mean, even if you don't remember things, uh, the, the things are there already and uh, and are ready to splash out from your window <laughs> in the in the in the wrong time oh thank you for sharing this <laughs> a very cool story yeah. would you have some advice for players who would like to start to be a dm yeah mm -hmm. yeah this is a this is a very good question uh, as a dm everyone that starts uh, feels a bit insecure i think uh, so what i can say is play your own way what i mean is that when you start you of course you want to follow advice which is very good which is very good but uh, don't make them fool you that uh, there is a right way or a wrong way of playing um, this is very today today it's very easy to fall in this trap you know following podcasts also very famous podcasts who feel like okay this is the way I should uh, lead the game well that's simply not true uh, especially at the beginning play your own way uh, your if you have house rules you include them if you don't feel comfortable with the mechanics on the rule and you feel to exclude it do it play your own way and have fun this is the most important thing at the beginning then with time you can improve you can align yourself more to the rule set and, and better uh, but play your own way yeah that's uh, that's exactly that's what I would say to uh, newbies DMs thank you very much Andrea I will put a link in the description of this video and um, mm -hmm. I hope I see you around and I wish you good luck on your kickstart thank you thank you very much for this uh, interview thanks